Hey everyone, Code for 29 is back with a brand new video. Today is part 13. It's crazy. We are one episode away from the finale of this series. I'm really excited. I hope you guys are too. Today we're talking mainly about remote events, but before we get onto this, I need to uh, talk about something that I forgot to mention in the last video, and that's um, something to do with the local script. So let's start with that, and then we'll get into remote events. All right, so the first thing, this is what I missed uh, last time. I completely forgot to talk about a very important topic, and it's player GUI. So a lot of people in my Discord server were getting a little confused from my last video because they were writing things like game.starterGUI.screenGUI.frame, stuff like that, and nothing was happening. And the reason is because um, there's this thing called a player GUI. So let me go ahead and play the game to show you exactly what I mean. So when you play the game and you come over here to players and you drop down this folder and find your player and drop it down as well, you'll notice this folder called a player GUI. And what this is, this is in every single Roblox game and it is all of the players GUI. So it, basically what this does is when you start the game, it takes everything in starter GUI and clones it and puts it in player GUI, okay? And each player has their own player GUI and this player GUI holds all of the UI for that one specific player. So you'll notice if I come down here to starter GUI and I get rid of this toggle button, if I delete it completely, it's still here for me. And the reason is because it is still in my player GUI screen GUI, okay? It's still here um, because that is what holds everyone's player. Uh, GUIs. Every player has their own player GUI. So let's go ahead and get a little practice with that just so that you guys can get it down. Uh, so let's insert a script into server script service this time. And let's go ahead and name this player GUI. And we can say game dot players dot player added colon connect function PLR. So remember, PLR is now going to be that player that just joined the game. So then we can say PLR, and we can say dot st uh, sorry dot player GUI. And you'll notice this is actually a suggestion by Roblox. That's because it is built into the game. So now we can find whatever screen GUI we want. So let's rename this screen GUI right here from the last video. We'll, we'll name it Toggle. And we'll, we'll, let's just go ahead and change the property of um, this toggle button. Let's change the background transparency to zero. So we can say plr.playerGUI, so that's their player GUI. And then we can say dot toggle because that's going to be this starter or this GUI. Um, because remember, when a player joins the game, it clones everything in starter starter GUI and puts it in their player GUI. So we can say player GUI dot toggle. Dot, and then we'll say toggle because that's the name of the button, uh, which is kind of confusing because we have the GUI as the same name, but don't worry about it. And we can say dot background transparency equals zero. So that will make it completely visible. So you'll notice right now it's kind of see-through, but through script, we can change that by using player GUI. Go ahead and play the game. Okay, so I made a made a middle, little mistake. Uh, the issue is, if that didn't work for you, was because their GUIs hadn't loaded in yet. So this is where we're gonna wanna use wait for child. So instead of dot toggle right here, player G, uh, PLR dot player GUI dot toggle, we'll say colon wait for child toggle, okay? And then make sure that there are quotation marks around toggle like that. And then we can say, um, dot toggle again because remember that's the button inside of the GUI. So that should work. Now let's go ahead and hit play. Alright, so now you can see it's not see-through at all. It's completely transparent and uh, yeah, so that works. A uh, couple more notes about GUIs before we start with the remote events. GUIs will automatically reset whenever you respawn your character. If you don't want that to happen, just uncheck this little thing on the screen GUI, not the in things inside of it. You have to either turn everything inside of that screen GUI on or off, so you just uncheck that if you don't want that to uh, reset when they spawn. And one more thing before we start remote events, this is local player. So every time you use a local script, there's actually something you can do, and you can say local player because local scripts run on the client so they are connected to the player so what we can say is local player equals game dot players dot local player okay so we can say game dot players dot local player to get whatever current 
the current player is. Um, we cannot do these on regular scripts because there is no local player for a script. Uh, this will just get the local player because this is a local script. So just remember, you can only do local players on local scripts, okay? Local, local. So, uh, yeah, and you can store that in a variable and you can use, now you can uh, say player all you want to reference their player. All right, so uh, that should work. Now let's get into the heart of today's video, remote events. So what are remote events? Well, basically we kind of discussed them last video a little bit, but they kind of connect the clients to the server and vice versa. So um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and insert a remote event into replicated storage. This is where I like to store all of my re remote events. Now make sure it's a remote event, not a remote function, because we're talking about remote events today. Remote functions are a different topic. Let me know if you want me to do a video on that, although it won't be in the beginner scripting series. Okay, now let's go ahead and rename this remote event. Uh, and we'll call this spawn part. So what we're going to do with this remote event is what we're, we are going to make it spawn apart whenever this uh, button is touched. So remember, let's go ahead and go into our starter GUI. We have this frame right here. Let's go ahead and make it visible real quick. And uh, we have this little click me button. And currently it um, spawns in a part, but remember only the player could see that because it spawns on the client uh, and that's because it's a local script. But now we're going to make it so that this button runs for the whole server and how we can make the server connect to the client. So uh, let's go ahead and come into this local script right here where we have this frame and let's go ahead and get rid of all of this local part equals instance dot new, all of that. We can get rid of all of that right there. And now what we're going to do is we're going to say, um, before this script up here, now mouse button one down, so we usually when you do variables, you want to put them outside of functions. Um, that way the script always has that variable. Uh, because if we put a variable here, uh, local variable equals to true, if we were to try and reference that outside of here, we could say variable. And it's going to be underlined in red. That's because the script does not know what to do because we defined variable inside of this function. So if you want to be able to use a variable outside or like anywhere in the script, you want to define it up at the top without any function inside of it. Okay. So let's say local spawn part, and this is going to be our um, remote event. So we can say equals to game dot replicated storage colon wait for child and we'll use spawn part. So that's our remote event. Now, uh, we currently have this set so that whenever we click the button, it makes the uh, frame invisible. And what we can do is we can say something, uh, we can say this, we can say spawn part, spawn part colon fire server, okay? So this fire server right here is what you do to connect the client to the server, okay? So uh, we'll pick this, what we're going to do is we're sending a message from when we use fire server we can only use these on local scripts okay spawn part colon fire server or whatever remote event colon fire server you can only do that on remote or local scripts sorry um because we are firing to the server we are sending information to the server and we can't send information from the server to the server we have to send it from the client um, so we can only do these on local scripts so basically what we're doing is we're saying we're gonna fire the server and then we can come into a uh, new script and we can pick that up on the server so let's insert a script into server script service and let's call this remote events so now what we're gonna want to do is we'll create another variable so we can say uh, local spawn part equals to game dot replicated storage and I'm sorry the video is probably so laggy I have no idea why today it's um, <laughs> acting up but hopefully you can see all right so we can say game dot replicated storage wait for child spawn part so now we have the remote event and what we can say is we can say spawn part uh, which is our remote event and then what we're gonna say is dot on server event now this is an event um, so we will connect it to a function so we'll say, whoops, that was my bad. I uh, don't have those parentheses there. Let's call and connect function like we would normally do. So now, whatever happens inside of here, this is going to happen whenever the server picks up a um, fire server. So whenever we do this, spawn part colon fire server, it's going to fire the server. So it's going to send a message to the server. It's basically saying, hey, server, we just sent a message to you from the client. And to pick it up, we say dot on server event. So that's the server picking up that message uh, from the client. I hope that makes sense. 
And now there's a very there's actually a parameter that we put inside of these parentheses, and that's player or PLR. You can name it whatever you want. It is just a variable. Um, so what this does is it um, it whatever player um, triggered this. So we have a local script, right? So the local script um, we don't even have to put this here, right? Because this is we don't have to put the player there um, because s remote events already have that built in. Um, like we have built-in parameters for um, player added, player removing, stuff like that. That's one of the built-in parameters for on for server event because the local script just by default passes in that information to the server. It says, okay, this is what player did this. Um, that's because the local script knows what, what the player is, um, if that makes any sense. I hope it does. <laughs> um, so inside of here now that we have the player uh, we always do want to have player here because we'll start passing through our own parameters pretty soon and uh, if we accidentally put like I don't know size here um, the script is going to set the variable size to be the player that did that so we always want to have player here uh, that way we uh, know which one is the player okay so whenever we get the spawn part let's go ahead and spawn a part we'll say local part equals to instance dot new part we can say part dot parent equals to workspace part dot position equals to vector three dot new zero five zero I'm not really gonna go through that very much because it's just the code we had in the client but we put it in the server basically it just spawns in a part so let's go ahead and play again all right, so if we make the frame visible and click this button, we will now have a part that appears here. And let's go ahead and knock it over so that it's out in the open. Um, so we can see this part. And this is the cool thing. Let's click current client to switch to the server. And voila, we have ourselves a part. Um, whoops, this, there we go. Um, so here is our part. Um, right here, it's replicated. That's what we call it, it replicated to the server. Um, because as you can see, we clicked this button and well, there's a new part again and let's switch to the server and we can see it. So it it's there for all players. By the way, if this glitch is happening to you or in the server, you look like you're floating in the base plate. Don't worry about it. That shouldn't really be a problem at all. It just is a weird glitch. I don't know why it's happening right now. Um, but yeah, so that is how we can use remote events to replicate to the server. Now, how about communicating from server to client? Actually, before we do that, I do want to show you um, how we can pass our own parameters. Uh, so what if we wanted to pass our own parameters? Like, let's just say for whatever reason we wanted to pass Bob to the server. We wanted to tell um, the server Bob whenever we fired this server, okay? So what we would do is inside of fire server inside of the parentheses we would just type in whatever parameter we want to have and in this case it's a string bob uh, i don't know why but in the server when we pick it up when we say on server we uh, on server event after player we add a comma and then we can name the variable so let's just call it name and then uh let's go ahead and print name and what you'll notice if you go ahead and hit play. So what you notice if we uh, click this button, not only do we get this part, but we have Bob printed in the output. And the reason is because we had this parameter called name. Um, and that was whatever we passed in from the client, which in this case was Bob. So um, we can pass in as many parameters as we want. Um, let's just pass in uh, true. Okay, so we to pass in the second one, we just write comma true or whatever you want. Uh, so we just do comma, comma, something else, comma, something else. That's how you pass different things. Um, and then what we'll do to pick it up is after name, we'll do comma bool, okay? Uh, because that's we just know that that's going to be true. Um, the reason that we know is because it's going to go in order. It's always going to be player first, and then it's going to go in order of what we sent. So it's Bob and then true. I hope this is making sense so far. Again, if you are ever having trouble with your code, make sure to join my Discord server, discord.io slash codebear29. I try my best to respond to everyone in scripting support when they have problems, but even if I can't help, there are a ton of friendly developers who would love to help you out too. Make sure to join that today, discord.io slash codebear29. And back to the video. All right, so now let's go ahead and connect the server to the client. Let's send a message that way. 
So the way we do that is uh, we've used colon fire server, but now you want to make a guess. We're going to use fire client, and uh, that's going to connect something from the server to the client. Okay, so what we'll do um, is we can say spawn part because that's our remote event colon fire client. Now, there's a couple things uh, that you should notice here. One is that I am putting this inside of the function, and you may wonder why. And the reason is because, uh, well, the reason is actually the second point I'm about to make, which is whenever you use fire client, you need to put whatever player you want to fire in there, okay? So you do uh, player right here, okay? So we do spawn part colon fire, play, uh, fire client player. So inside of these parentheses, you need to put whatever player you want to fire the client. So in this case, I want to fire back some information to the client that just clicked the button. So right here, we have the spawn part on server event. So we want to um, pick this up on the server and then fire some information back to the person who just did the uh, fire server if that makes sense just keep in mind just remember when you use fire client you need to put in the player so let's go back to our local script and how do we pick that up well it's very similar to the uh, server side all we have to do is say spawn part dot on a client event instead of on server event and then we say colon connect function and then drop a line so with on client event you do not um, put a player inside of here because, well, the script already knows what the player is going to be. This is going to pick it up only for that player, and the script already knows what that player is because each player has their own local scripts, okay? that Basically, that's how it works. That's how they know uh, what player they're connected to. So we have on client event. So whenever uh, this local script receives information, uh, let's just go ahead and print picked back up on the client okay obviously you can do the same thing with the server where you pass in parameters um, but now let's just go ahead and play so that I can show you it prints back from the client and then there's one more thing from remote events that I want to talk to you about all right so let's click make frame visible let's hit click me and uh, we'll see Bob from the server but we'll also see this picked back up from the client and uh, yeah that basically means that well the client got our message uh, wherever that is I kind of got lost there it is picked back up on the client so this client got our message um, back because we fired the client Okay, so let's go back to our remote event script, our, our actual script, and there's one more thing I want to show you, and that is fire all clients, and this is the last thing we're going to do with remote events, so I'm going to comment out the fire client, and now what we can do is say spawn part, colon, fire all clients, and in this case, we do not need, a, we can't have a player in there, we shouldn't have a player in there, because uh, the script is just going to fire to all the clients. It's going to tell every single player to pick up a um, this, this uh, message. So, we don't need to do anything different, we still use on client event to pick that up, because it's still picking up an information from the server to the client. Um, but in this case, the only thing that's different is that we are um, firing it to all the clients. So that's how you give information from the server to everybody in the game. So let's just go ahead and say hello. That'll be our first, that'll be a parameter. And then inside of uh, this, we'll just say message. Okay. Um, and what we're going to do is we'll go ahead and print. And we can say the message from the server is... And then we'll use colon and a space. And I believe we talked about concatenating. If we didn't, I apologize for dropping this in here. But we can say dot dot message. And now it'll print whatever the message from the server was, okay? So let's go ahead and hit play one more time. Our last play test for this, uh, the tutorial part, really. Next part is going to be the uh, final game. So I hope you're excited for that. I currently have a poll going on my YouTube channel. Go to my community tab and vote right now if you want uh, so that you can get your vote for the final game. So uh, all that said, let's go ahead and make the frame visible.
click me and we can see the message from the server is hello. So that is how we use remote events. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it was helpful. Once again, thanks to my now two Patreons. You guys are awesome. Thank you. Uh, you're up on the sc screen right now. And uh, thank you for being a Patreon and supporting me in that way. Again, make sure to join my Discord server. Link in the description or go to discord.io slash codebro29. Other than that, I'll see you for our final game. Thanks for watching, guys.